Hello and welcome to Stamper School. This is Julie Maxson, the Maine Stamper. I'm an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! and I live in Maine, USA. These short lessons in the basics of Stampin' Up! products are intended to give you the confidence you need in paper crafting, whether you're a complete beginner or an entirely experienced stamper. In today's class, we are learning about black ink. Now, specifically, we're learning about Stampin' Up!'s black ink choices. So we have two of them. We have the Stazon ink pad and we have the Memento ink pad. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about how they work, when you would want to use them, how to clean them. We're gonna cover all of the topics today. But if I miss anything, please leave a question in the comments and I will get back to you with your answer. Now, these are not exclusive Stampin' Up! products. These items are available pretty much everywhere. But Stampin' Up! uses these items and they sell them in their catalogs. The Stampin' Right marker, Stampin' Blends are Stampin' Up's exclusive products and we're going to be covering these in another topic, another class, but they kind of have a little bit to do with our class and our ink choices today. So we're going to talk about those very briefly, okay? So the first thing we're going to talk about is refills because you can buy an ink pad, but it's only going to get you as far as it's going to get you, right? I always recommend to get the refill bottle when you purchase the ink pad. So you're always ready to go. And my refills are sadly very low. So I realized that as I pulled this out today. Let's start with the Stazon ink. So the Stazon ink is a an oil based let's think of it as an oil based ink it's very um it's a very um useful ink if you want to stamp on something other than paper on the back of this it tells you here it's a fast drying solvent ink and it's really good for plastic metal glass um not metal glass but metal and glass right ceramic uh laminated paper leather all kinds of things you can use the stays on ink in all kinds of things um, that are not going to work with a memento ink that's going to kind of wipe away. So think about your clear window sheets. You can stamp stays on ink on a clear window sheet and it will dry, when it dries, it will be, um, you won't be able to swipe it away, right? So stays on ink is, is a kind of different ink, really. It's, um, it has, and it has an aroma. So don't think it's weird when you open it up and you, you can smell the aroma of the ink. It's a little bit different. So the the pads on both of these are going to be like a foam pad. Um, I'm sorry, like a linen pad. I apologize. The foam pads really are more like the, um, the regular ink pads are foam pads. This is more of a linen pad. When you refill this, the refill kind of just, you're going to see that it just kind of, it, it goes right into the pad. You don't need to bring out a spoon or, or a bone fold or anything to refill it. You're just going to let that kind of go down into the pad. So hopefully you could see some of that while I was playing there, it kind of soaks in, seeps in. So that is the stays on ink. And the stays on ink requires a, a specific cleaner to clean up your stamps properly. Let's talk briefly about the Memento ink. The Memento ink is my go-to ink. I use this one all the time. I don't use the stays on unless I have a specific project in mind for it. So the Memento ink is way easier to clean up after. This is a water-based ink. And this is, again, my favorite go-to ink. It has the same linen type pad. It looks very similar to the Stazon. So the Stazon does have a, a little extra protective cover here, but you can see here that they look really similar when they're side by side. So you don't want to put them both on your desk at the same time and forget which is which. This is definitely Stazon. Memento ink refill works the same way as the Stazon ink refill will. It's just going to kind of soak into the pad and I probably, this pad is probably really over, over inked right now. So it's going to, it's going to take a little bit to soak into that, but that's how you refill it. It's really simple. They have covers that kind of come on and off quite easily. So you want to make sure that you are keeping them flat and closed tightly because they don't have that secure locking mechanism that you hear when you close up your other ink pads, right? So it would be possible to pick this up and you actually just pull the lid right off of it. Now, along with the ink itself, your image quality is going to rely upon the quality of your stamps. And we did talk about photopolymer and clear stamps in another lesson. So we are gonna be using both of these today and we're gonna kind of compare them. Uh, this cling stamp has an open pattern, so it has less imagery on it. And this little submarine stamp, which may be hard to see in the light, 
This is a very big pattern and it's going to have to absorb a lot of ink to cover the surface and get a good image. So your, your inks um, are going to work differently on different types of stamps. They're also going to work differently on types of paper that are different, right? So if you have, this is regular typewriter paper, this is a piece of the white uh, Stampin' Up's white cardstock. Um, so depending on the quality of your paper, the quality of your inks, you're going to get different images out of your ink pads. So I want you to be aware of that. If you have good ink, good stamps, bad paper, you're not going to necessarily get a great image. Um, so you want to have the right combination of good inks, good stamps, and good paper, and then you're going to have better images when they, when they all come down to play. So let's talk a little bit about Memento. We're going to start with Memento first. So we're going we're gonna to ink up our little submarine here, and I'm going to come this way and kind of come on top of him. Now, of course, with the, with the stamps here, you can see the coverage that you've got going on. So this is Memento ink. This is our water-based ink. And we're going to give this guy a shout here onto the white cardstock. Now, I'm going to hold this down for a few seconds because I'm letting the ink absorb into the paper as much as possible. You know that when you pull up your, your block, right, and you look at your, your stamp, there's always like a little bit left over, but if you hold it on a little bit longer, more of that ink is gonna hit the surface there. So there's my little submarine in black memento. Let's try our memento ink now on the flower image. And we're gonna just do the same thing. This is a nice firm pad, so it's, it's really easy to leave your stamp facing up and just go all over that surface. Make sure you've got lots of ink on it. And we're gonna do the little flower here on my scrap of white. And just like that. Now, uh, you can't beat a really good black image. So those are the two images that I did in um, the Memento ink. So let's remember that that's Memento. We're going to just put a little M on the side because we're going to compare now to the stays on ink. I love to do comparisons. So I'm going to just bring in my stamp and scrub here real quick. We're going to clean this up. I believe I covered stamp and scrubs in cleaning in another video. If you're looking for that one, I believe it was when to use baby wipes and when not to. And uh, I talked about all the different ways that you can clean your stamps. Now we're going to go back in with the stays on this time. So now we're going to try the stays on ink. Now the stays on ink will stain your stamp. So just be aware of that. So going forward, my little submarine stamp is going to have a nice hint of black on it. But we're going to go ahead and pop this on with the stays on ink, which is probably going to give us a really crisp, deep image, which is nice. I know, I know that's why people love the stays on ink. So we're just going to put this on here. I don't even need to hold this down as long. I can tell it's already going to be super dark. So there is the difference between Memento and stays on. So hopefully you can see this one is so much darker. I'm going to immediately use stays on cleaner. And I'm just gonna, this has a little scrubbing thing right here. I'm gonna put a little bit of stays on cleaner on here. This is my photopolymer um, stamp. And the stays on cleaner is going to get immediately put back into my stamp and scrub because I wanna get that stays on cleaner off. And I'm using the stamp and mist in my cleaner. So there is um, a cleaner in here that's gonna remove the stays on. The stays on ink, you don't wanna leave it on your photopolymer stamps. It will eventually um, ruin them a little bit. So there's that one. Now we're gonna do the flower stays on. Okay, there's a lot of moving parts here today. I'm trying to remember which, which I've done and which I haven't done. So here we go with the flower in the stays on. We're gonna put this right over here, stamping down. And if you have these inks at home, have fun and play. It is a lot of fun, right? So here's the comparison side by side, Memento and stays on. And there's not a lot of difference with the red rubber. I don't think there's a lot. It's a little bit darker perhaps, but there's not a huge difference. Now again, I'm gonna use the stays on cleaner and just that helps to break down the oils in the stays on ink. So as it comes on here, it kind of breaks that down really easily. And then actually I'm gonna just kind of a little bit of that over there on my scrap paper, which happens to be out before I hit up my stamp and scrub to clean this up completely. Now, you may be wondering again, so okay, you get a better image with the stays on, that's great. It's a little bit more to clean up. I am, um, it could stain your stamp. Mine's just slightly stained. I cleaned it immediately, so it's really not that bad. Um, and here, just for comparison's sake, here is something that I did earlier in Gorgeous Scrape. So I have the Gorgeous Scrape up here with the Memento and then the gorgeous grape with the stays on. So it kind of gives you an idea of what they look like. Now, where these come in handy is the stays on ink, you would use 
markers to color the imagery. And I don't think I had a marker out in particular that I was gonna just kind of scribble a little bit onto the flowers. Okay, so here's a marker. Um, so we're gonna just color a little bit of this, um, this was our stays on, right? So you could color the stays on with the markers because the markers are water-based. Okay, so with the memento ink, you would be using blends to color because you wanna use opposites. So the blends happen to have an oil-based ink in them and then you're using the opposites, right? So, and these are different colors of purple. So you can use them without blending and blurring the lines. Now, if I took the memento ink and, oh, that was my memento ink and I use this, okay, so if I took my, I lost my train of thought on this one and here I am recording this and I'm not gonna re-record it, so we're just gonna go with where we're at right now. So coloring, you're gonna do opposites. Stays on, you wanna use the markers. Memento ink, you wanna use the blends. That's where I was going with that. So you're gonna be using these different opposite oils and waters to do your coloring. And we're just gonna talk really briefly about Something that has long retired that we're all sad about, but if you have one, this is the Stamparatus. If you don't have one, you can get a Misty and kind of do the same thing with it, right? The Misty is uh, the original. So I'm going to just take my photopolymer stamp off of here. I have this already mounted up with um, the magnets and some paper, and I'm just kind of positioning this on here so I'll know where to have my stamp come down onto my paper. So this is going to be a way that you can use the Memento ink and stamp more than once to get really great images. I'm gonna put my little cap over there. Hopefully you can see that off to the side just slightly. I have my cap on here so that this, this plate, this is basically our clear block right now. This plate is being supported by my, my block. And I'm gonna just come over here and press on here like this was my clear block and then I've got some spots here, which we've kind of seen earlier, right? We don't get a complete, necessarily a complete image with our first stamping. So with the, with the Stamparatus, with the Misty type tool, it allows you, it's a repositioning tool, right? So it allows you to continue to ink up and stamp multiple times, and then you're gonna get the most amazing image right here, right? So this is a huge difference from our original one stamp of a memento. So this was one stamp, this was three stamps. So if you have a repositioning tool the memento, and the memento ink, you can get the same results that you would get with just one uh, stamping of, this was our stays on, ink submarine and this is our memento ink submarine so there is really um there's so many ways to go about getting good imagery out of your black ink pads i wanted to share that a little bit with you about the memento and the stays on and how they best work with either the markers or the blends and how you would want to clean them up using either the stays on cleaner or regular cleaner and definitely make sure you're getting those refills and getting your ink ink pads refilled as needed. So there we go. Thank you for joining me for Stamper School today. I would love to know if you found this class helpful. And again, if you have any questions on what I covered today, please let me know and I will answer them. So I would also love to know if you have ideas for future Stamper School uh, subjects. All right, everyone, stay creative and see you in the next session of Stamper School. Bye.